Okay, going to give you my video on doing the digital readout scales. Uh, that's the model I got. Uh, what else is on here? You can pause it. But anyways, all right. Here's the DRO I bought for this lathe. It's, uh, I don't know if you could even read that. There's, not, there's nothing there but a diamond. Okay, so anyways, here's what I did. Uh, they give you this aluminum extrusion here to mount it and cover it. Uh, as you can tell, it's right there. It's, uh, it's what I used. I had to cut about that much off, plus this flange down the bottom. So I, this is all I'm using is this little guy right here. That's him right there. Anyways, that's that. So, what I did is I, in the cross slide, I drilled and tapped two holes right here. Uh, I believe they were 832s because that's what I got. Um, then mounted that piece of aluminum extrusion after I had cut it and flattened it. Um, I did cut it with a die grinder and I ended up not liking it. So I went back, threw it in the bridge port with some sheep, uh, flat stock on either side and then ran an end mill and flattened that out nice and filed it. Uh, drilled and tapped 1020, no, 1032, uh, one here and one down here. Uh, this one is ground flush with the back of the extrusion. This one sticks out, as you can tell, and three threads, doesn't matter. Um, had to grind out a section here with the die grinder because you need the space. Um, all right, next, after I had this all figured out, yeah, I did drill and tap uh, one hole so far. Uh, Got to get in there with something else. I'm going to have to lift the saddle up because the... Uh, the, the carriage ain't going to do you any good. There's no room between the ways and this hole. It's what's that half inch from here to here. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I got to I got to lift it. So anyways, okay. To explain the scales, here's what they look like. I'll give you a shot of this guy here. Um this is what I have. 650 is obviously way too long of a length. Length <laughs> Linked. So, and I was fearful like everybody when it comes to doing this. I don't, well, I do have a Dremel. I have no idea where it is. I actually have two of them. I uh, haven't seen them in years. Uh, just what happens when you got uh, just holes everywhere between two houses. Well, I live out here in Connecticut and I own a house in Nevada. So, some of my tools are there. Most of them are here, unfortunately, for now. Regardless of that, so when, when it comes to doing this, now it matters because this piece of glass is held on by a little blob of silicone on either end. And in the center section, there's little pieces of what looks like string trimmer line. It's maybe a uh, 16th of an inch in diameter. Um, and it's pressed in the groove, obviously, you know, it's hard to tell, but this groove is wider than the glass. So you can see it would be pressed in that little groove between the glass and the bottom of the groove. Anyways, so in order to cut this, and like I said, I don't have uh, many tools here in my shop that are good for cutting glass. And you got to remember which way you had it. The red line on top is actually just Sharpie. I was using that to mark off... Uh, and get a better visual of where this uh, would be cut. But anyways, in order to cut it, you lay it flat and you get yourself a carbide scribe. This one was made by General. Um, they usually have them in Home Depot. They're cheap. Uh, General has a lot of cheap tools. They're home, they're, I think they're in true values as well. But this is old. I think I've had this for probably 20 years. I'm dating myself. I guess I am old. But anyways, it's a carbide tip. It's uh, inside a piece of brass. Um, clicks it like a pen. Comes out pretty far. And goes right back in. But anyways, this little sharp guy right here 
is perfect for it. You scratch the glass two or three passes, flip it over to the other side, scratch it two or three passes on the other side, lay it down on something flat where the, the corner, so it'd be, if it was laying across here, the line that you want to you scribe would be, forget this chamfer though, it has to be a perfect corner, 90 degree, no, no chamfer. But okay, so the edge is here, the line is here, you hold this down with the, with one hand and you come over and you just grab the other piece and you just give it a little bend, a little touch and it'll pop and it'll shear off perfectly. Um, let me hold you for one second. Okay, back at it. Here is a piece of it. I did it because you do have to shorten it and this end, end was going to be too long with this taped up inside here. So I even shortened this cutoff piece. Now, because this is longer than the other one, I had a little bit of play there to fart around with, and it was a safety. If I did full bar the first cut, the second one obviously would have been okay off of there. Um, you can see the Sharpie on it. But that's that's the guy right there. That's that's all this stuff is. You don't need a Dremel. You just give it a couple scratches. As you can see right there, the whitish edge to it is where I scored it on that side. And I scored it less on this second cut. This first cut, I was overkill. But that's because I didn't know. Anyways, um, this guy has got to be put in in the exact same direction. Side to side, front to back. Because it sits in that groove. You can see there's two different heights. Uh, the piece is held in with, like I said, silicone on this end, silicone on the other end. And in between, in that little bit of a groove right, right there, right there, not there, but right there, you'll see these pieces of like string trimmer line that are pushed in. I put them all in this one. I didn't put any in this one. Um, it's a soft rubber plastic probably HDPE but anyways that's that's all you have to do it's easy once you get this guy back in um, you know you put him back in the right spot the next problem you have to fight with is drilling for these because obviously there's only holes on one end you know when you uh, cut it so the other end of this there are no holes um, I'm not going to peel it off. You can take, mark my word. So what you do is you put this block in and get it clamped into place. Uh, it's kind of a difficult operation, but you get a drill that's going to be the same size as the shaft of the screw. So let's say, um, for instance, this guy or this guy. The way the threads are formed on, on these, they're, they're, well, on these they're cut. Um, they're roll formed but on the screws that are in here this obviously has a, um, a thinner section and so does this but on the ones that are in there what they do is they just have these screws you know like a screw blank would be like this and it's rolled against these threads like that and it pushes and it squeezes and it displaces the metal. It makes the ridges that come up and form the threads. So you get a pair of calipers and on the flat part, the non-threaded, you measure that and you come up with a diameter. You can get a, a small wire drill that's a little bit smaller than this diameter. Drill it and then you take your screwdriver and you'll need to see this. I don't know if it'll come in, but... Uh, Right there, no, right there. See how the tip is flat perfectly? I had to grind it. Uh, sometimes there you can see. Uh. All right, well, trust me on it. I had to grind this. You can't have a pointy tip on the screwdriver for these these screws in here. Otherwise, they'll you'll just pop and wear round them out on the inside. So, anyways. Put your screwdriver, screw in, put your screw in, put your screwdriver against it, 
and push real hard and turn and it'll it'll run the thread it'll make its own threads it'll run right in here you do this one then you do this one and then you do this one or this one doesn't matter as long as you get them diagonally it'll seat flatter um, and that's it you, you push them in you, you make your threads um, same thing there this I did uh, 1024 cap screw uh, this one I didn't do yet because obviously the space obviously is not very conducive to using a cordless drill so I got to come up with a different plan gonna lift the uh, saddle up and be done with it that way um, oh let me show you while I still have power right now because I'm getting ready to go home um, where's the switch there you go that's him working um, here I'll do this I'll do a little demonstration for you actually right Oop, sorry okay so I'm gonna hit the zero on this and you got zero right there well not quite but hang on that's still loose so that's good I can get you a view of this all right, so now zero here, zero here. If I go 50 here, Sometimes you just gotta do it with the two hands. All right, 50. 507. Yeah, obviously something's a little bit off here. I didn't run an indicator against it, but I'm pretty sure the scales are more accurate than this uh, Grizzly G4003 uh, dials. But anyways, I just wanted to show you this thing does work all right. Um, I still have to put uh, some loops in, attach this guy here, over here somewhere. I'll put one of those wire loops like this guy. I have a few of these. Um, he's on a magnet right now just for the heck of it. Um, until I get the other scale in and I'll do something with the wires. I may do an attachment point up here and um, like an antenna spring or something like that. I don't know. But I uh, just wanted to show everybody this is uh, not a difficult task uh, to complete. And uh, don't be afraid to buy scales that are a little bit off instead of paying extra money for them to cut the scales to size for your own lathe. Um, just remember you need to have full, full travel. So you have to have a long enough scale cut in order for this guy. Um, there's two sets of seals in these guys. Lip seals. Um, let me peel the tape off of here so you can see how they sit. They sit right in these, like that groove there, that groove there, that one and that one. Um, they're not, uh, they're not anything super exciting. They're just stuff right here. So once it's again, it's just like windshield wipers except for plastic and probably a chemical resistant almost like that yellow fuel line stuff you see in string trimmers but um anyways that's it for now that's all i got um yeah it's a mess but hey you gotta make a mess to get things to be done and um proud to say i have 50 percent of my digital readout done and um a little more work to do and this guy will be uh, done on as all the way around I also have some plastic I think I'm gonna replace this with instead of the wood top that's on here um, or not I don't know it doesn't matter we'll see all right guys uh, thanks for watching bye